Another variable that has a major influence on delta, particularly for in-the-money and out-of-the-money options, is how much time is left before the option expires. Even if all other things remain equal, the simple passage of time will also have an effect on the delta of an option. Similar to how higher implied volatility implies a higher chance of price moving further, more time, or higher DTE, gives price more time to move further, and so has a similar effect on option deltas as higher implied volatility. Let's take a look at the $100 call option again, this time with a fixed 60% implied volatility. We'll look at the same 30 days to expiry initially, in green labelled as today, but then let's see how deltas change as time passes, or as days to expiry decreases. The days to expiry can be seen to have a similar effect on delta as implied volatility was shown to have previously. The higher the days to expiry, i.e. the longer there is until expiration, the further in the money the call option has to be to have a delta approaching 1, and the further out of the money the call option has to be to have a delta approaching 0. If we look at the delta of the $100 call with the underlying price sitting at $110, we get the following deltas for each DTE. With 30 days, it's 0.74. With 21 days, it's 0.77. With 12 days, it's 0.82. And with 3 days, it's 0.96. Because at an underlying price of $110, the $100 call option is in the money, the delta approaches 1 as time passes. You can see by looking at the chart that if we were looking at the same option with the underlying price sitting at $90 instead, leaving the $100 call out of the money, the option deltas would approach 0 as time passed. The more time left until expiry, or the higher the DTE, the further out of the money the option has to be for the delta to get close to 0. A delta of close to zero implies that it's almost certain that the option will expire out of the money. And the more time left until an option expires, the more time is left for the underlying price to move, so the further out of the money an option has to be for there to be almost no chance of it becoming in the money at expiry. We can also view this relationship between DTE and delta by taking a similar look at the delta of multiple option strikes with different times left until they expire like so. This time, the asset price is fixed at $100, still with 60% IV. And instead of looking at a single $100 call option, we are looking at all call options with strike prices from $50 to $150. Let's take a look at the $110 call option as an example. This is what the delta would be for each value of days to expiry. With 30 days, it's 0 0.32, with 21 days, it's 0 0.28, with 12 days, it's 0 0.21, and with 3 days, it's 0 0.04. The only thing that is different here is the time left before the option expires. The strike price, underlying price, and implied volatility are all the same. This difference in days to expiry from 30 down to 3 leads to deltas ranging from 0 0.32 to 0 0.04. This difference means that with 30 days to expiry, this $110 call option would increase in value by 32 cents if the underlying price increased from $100 to $101. However, with only 3 days to expiry, this same option would only increase in value by 4 cents for the same underlying price increase from $100 to $101. Notice also how the decrease in delta is not linear. The decrease gets faster the closer we get to expiry. Each step in time is exactly 9 days, and yet the delta drops by a different amount each time. It is possible to measure this rate of change as well, but that is beyond the scope of this lecture. More generally, you can see from the chart that the higher the days to expiry, the lower the in-the-money deltas are, and the higher the out-of-the-money deltas are. The more time left until expiry, of course, meaning that the underlying price has more time to move in either direction. Or put another way, the less likely price is going to be where it is now by the time the option expires. This has the effect of decreasing deltas for in-the-money options, due to the larger amount of time they have to become out of the money. 
This also has the effect of increasing deltas for out-of-the-money options, due to there being more time left for the out-of-the-money options to become in-the-money. Remember, at expiry it is only the in-the-money options that will have any value. And it's the implied probability of being in the money at expiry that is affecting the deltas here. For in-the-money options, a higher days to expiry increases the implied probability that it will no longer be in the money at expiry, thus lowering the delta compared to if days to expiry were lower. For out-of-the-money options, a higher days to expiry increases the implied probability that it will become in the money at expiry, thus increasing the delta compared to if there were less time until expiry. As a corollary, as time passes, the delta for in-the-money call options will tend towards 1, and the delta for out-of-the-money call options will tend towards 0. Similarly, the delta for in-the-money put options will tend towards negative 1, and the delta for out-of-the-money put options will tend towards 0. Let's take a look at this phenomenon in action with a live example by looking at several options with the same strike price but different days to expiry. This is the Deribit option chain for Bitcoin. At the top of the chain, it's possible to restrict the strike prices that are shown, and for this example, I've set it to only show the $70 strike price for each expiry date. The underlying price of Bitcoin is trading at around $62,000 so the $70,000 call option is out of the money. Given what we have just talked about, we would expect an out of the money call option to lose delta as time to expiry decreases. The Deribit option chain displays the shortest date at the top, which is the 27th of October 2021 here, and the longest date at the bottom, which is the 30th of September 2022 here. Starting with the most time to expiry at the bottom, which has about 338 days to expiry, we can see the delta for the $70,000 strike call option is 0.67. Moving up to the June 2022 expiry, which has about 240 days to expiry, we can see the delta of this $70,000 call has a slightly lower value of 0.63. Next is the March 2022 expiry, which has about 149 days to expiry and we can see the delta of this call again has a slightly lower value of 0.58. This trend continues through each of the expiry dates. As the days to expiry decreases, so too does the out-of-the-money call option delta, until eventually we get to the $70,000 call that has less than one day to expiry, which has a delta of very close to zero. This is exactly what we would expect, because as time passes, the delta for in-the-money call options will tend towards 1, and the delta for out-of-the-money call options will tend towards 0. In summary, the more time left until an option expires, the more time is left for the underlying price to move. The time left until the option expires, or days to expiry, will have an effect on option deltas. Higher days to expiry will result in smaller deltas for in-the-money options and larger deltas for out-of-the-money options. Lower days to expiry will result in larger deltas for in-the-money options and smaller deltas for out-of-the-money options. The delta for in-the-money call options will tend towards 1. The delta for in-the-money put options will tend towards minus 1. The delta for both out-of-the-money puts and out-of-the-money calls will tend towards 0, though from opposite sides.